Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to this uh, press conference. Apologies for the slight delay. Uh, we had to wait for some court process that are happening. Um, thank you very much for coming. Um, before we start, for the sake of us being safe and also to avoid uh, any challenges, let's keep our mask on uh, right away. I will get into the program. I will hand over to Kavani, who is going to be addressing the press conference. Thank you. On the 15th of May, 2021, the High Court of Zimbabwe, Peugeot J, Shore J, Charewa J, issued a landmark judgment in which it held that the tenure of Chief Justice Luke Malaba had come to an end. Retired former Chief Justice Luke Malaba saved the country for a period in excess of 40 years, and this service must be recognized. We thank him. In the aftermath of the judgment, both the Minister of Justice, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs were cited as the first respondent and the Judicial Service Commission, which sought joined in the matter as the 19th respondent, indicated that they would appeal the judgment. The position is that the High Court issued a declarator or a declaratory order as was sought by our consultant, Dr. Musa Kika. Whilst an appeal can, all things being equal, be lodged against a declarator, the position in law, the position in law is that an appeal does not suspend the operation of a declarator. Various authorities resolve this point and they are as old as the law itself. In Econet Private Limited versus Telesol Zimbabwe Private Limited 1998, Volume 1, Zimbabwe Law Reports, page 149, the correct legal position was articulated as follows. My ruling is in effect declaratory, that is to declare what the law provides. The applicant now enjoys nothing that he did not enjoy before launching the proceedings, except the comfort of having had the court confirm his legal opinions. Still, as the facts reveal a competition for rights in respect of the claims, justice, common sense, and good order require judicial confirmation on the issue. And the seeking of a declaratory order was indicated. Later, the court says, Accordingly, in my view, since paragraph one of the order granted by Sandura JP was merely confirming the rights of Econet, the noting of the appeal could not suspend the effect of that paragraph as it does not confer any rights. I take that again. The noting of the appeal could not suspend the effect of that paragraph as it does not confer any rights. That being the case, the notice of N or any appeal cannot suspend the operation of the judgment of the High Court of the 15th of May, 2021. Honorable Luke Malaba is now the former Chief Justice of Zimbabwe. 
as a result in accordance with provisions of section 181 of the constitution of zimbabwe 2013 the substantive deputy chief justice has now become the country's acting chief justice this is a constitutional imperative retired chief justice malaba cannot for that reason exercise any function either as the chairperson of the judicial service commission or as a judicial officer serve in rendering judgments in those cases that she had while still a judge. For that reason, if the retired Chief Justice contests the judgment of the High Court, he can only do so in his personal capacity. That position comes with certain consequences for the Judicial Service Commission, and in particular, as regards its right to not an appeal on behalf of the retired Chief Justice. Owing to the gravity of the matter, we wish to advise that we affirm instructions from our consultant, Dr. Musa Kika, to take the necessary legal action, including the institution of proceedings for contempt of court, should the law not be faithfully and scrupulously adhered to. I turn to the statement issued by the Minister of Justice himself a litigant in the proceedings which has caused both ourselves as officers of the court and our consultant as the successful litigant grave concern. Our consultant is accordingly taken a very serious view of the matter. We however wish to respectfully decline the inevitable invitation to engage the contents of that matter. As we politely decline that invitation, we make the observation that the minister's statement is actually meant to threaten other judges who may become seized with the offshoots of this dispute. We call upon the Minister of Justice, the girl in parliamentary affairs, to remain faithful to his obligations as a minister of the government of Zimbabwe, a registered legal practitioner, and a litigant. We, however, have instructions to ensure that the seriousness which, with which the comments are viewed by our consultant, and indeed by all right-thinking uh, Zimbabweans, be reflected in the corrective action to be taken. For that reason, we advise that a letter has been written to the Registrar of the High Court, the Judge President, and the Honorable Justices who dealt with the matter, requesting the issuance of a citation for contempt of court against the Minister. The legal issues that arise from this matter must therefore be dealt with in the High Court. We believe the minister must show cause or be required to show cause why the high court must not hold him to be in contempt of court. We are aware that there are so many issues on which the nation justifiably want to hear our voice. We would rather certain voices were heard instead. On our part, we will confine ourselves to the matters of law that we have identified and to the pursuit <coughs> of the corrective measures demanded by the situation. Lastly, we wish to thank Zimbabweans for believing in an orderly and peaceful resolution of mortal disputation. We thank all those who have avidly defended the Constitution of Zimbabwe and have been anxious to ensure the observance of its text and spirit. We thank you all. Thank you very much, Advocate. Um, we will take our questions. Um,
our panel is available to respond to questions and uh, let's just uh, indicate which of the questions, raise your hand, identify yourself, then uh, you ask a question. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Blessed Mishama. I can solve TV and radio. Um, uh, my question uh, is... Hi, hi Blessed. Uh, how are you doing, uh, Advocate Falcon? I'm sure you're not here to grill me like you did to that other gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being here, blessed. Um, I, I wanted to find out, um, with your guidance, uh, what, what, what form of opportunities are available given that uh, the Supreme Court and the Com Court and the Judicial Service Commission are interested parties, all of them? I can't give you advice on that. Our consultant was the successful part in the litigation. Our consultant does not intend to appeal. Uh, and in fact, our consultant believes that an appeal would be incompetent under the circumstances. But we won't get into those details. Hello? Uh, my name is Mr. Just as uh, clarity again, advocate. I understand that your consultant will not appeal. But in the event that there is an appeal from this case, who is likely to hear this appeal? Once again, we are not responsible for deciding uh, how courts are constituted. Uh, should anyone want to appeal, should that issue arise, the Constitution of Zimbabwe is clear. And what can and cannot be done is clear, not only to lawyers, I believe, but also to lay people uh, in view of the circumstances of this matter. But we do not wish to litigate any matters uh, outside court. Uh, we point out, though, that at all times that are going to be material, we insist on the observance of the Constitution. We have thought these things through. Uh, we you know what may or may not happen. And we are prepared to fight not only in defense our consultant who's instructed us in this matter, but in defense of the constitution of Zimbabwe, in defense of the found, founding values on which that constitution is based, in defense of constitutionalism, in defense of the rule of law, in defense of the principles that uh, underpin our democracy and critically, in defense of judicial independence. We're prepared to fight for that. Uh, before I go to Bliss, uh, anybody else who has a question? You can go ahead, Bliss. You speak about judicial independence, but the ministry that superintends over uh, the judiciary or over the justice and justice in this country has said that the judiciary is captured. Which independence are you talking about? Thank you. Uh, those are the contents of the statement that we have read. Uh, and I must say, when I read that statement, I, I queried its authenticity. Uh, but the course that we have taken is that the issues raised in that statement are serious. And that is one of the issues that are raised. We have taken a particular view of the matter, uh, and in particular, that those statements scandalize the court. We therefore want to be heard by a court of law uh, in argument over those issues, uh, because that is what the minister has apparently said. And it is for that reason that we have requested the issuance of a citation for contempt of court. Uh, the letter that I hold here has been received uh, by the registrar of the High Court. Uh, it is made to the attention of the judge president. Uh, it is copied to the honorable judges who have the matter. You will recall, uh, for, for some of you, well, it's all this blessed, uh, that we've been down this road before. Uh, in Chinamasa, there's a judgment of the Supreme Court, which is called Indre Chinamasa, which deals with these issues. We are of the view that the circumstances of the matter dictate that the procedure set out in Chinamasa be activated. And because we have an interest, 
which arises at two level. Number one, our consultant was the successful litigant in that litigation. Number two, we are officers of the court. We have an interest in having the veracity of those issues dealt with, the effects of the allegations raised by the minister dealt with. Uh, we have an interest in ensuring that the minister is required to establish the, the credibility of the assertions that he has made because we realize that it has an impact on judicial independence we realize that it has an impact on the integrity of the courts. We realize that it has an impact on how the nation views the custodians, not just of the law, but of the constitution of Zimbabwe. Not just of the constitution of Zimbabwe, but of the legitimate aspirations of the generality of the citizen of Zimbabwe as embodied in that constitution. Yeah, can I just add one point? So our, our remit and brief in these matters Our remit is against uh, the serious threats uh, made against that constitution, particularly threats coming from constitutional amendment number one and constitutional amendment number two. So that's our role, that's our remit, that's our, our brief, that's our mandate. Nothing more, nothing less. Another question? Right. Well, in absence of uh, any other question, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for attending this press conference. And thank you for amplifying our voice in the fight for women's rights in the state of the country. Thank you.